Hi, I'm here to talk to you today about um, designing for neurological conditions such as autism and Asperger's. At Create Architects we've done an awful lot of research into this area and we found it to be quite a groundbreaking um, area of research into design, designing specifically for neurological conditions. Um, some of the points that we have found from this are things such as good lighting and also non-fluorescent lighting, um, something which a lot of people with autism have found is that there is the sub-visible uh, flicker and that can be quite quite stressful to people, say, with autism or other neurological conditions. Other points that have come out of it is things such as proprioception. So what that means is um, your personal space around you. So very often when we design for um, uh, people with neurological conditions, we allow greater circulation spaces, and this is a good example of one. What is also important is colours. Now there is a lot of debate about things uh, about colours and um, designing specific uh, wall colours for people with autism. You can go for a, a sensory sensitive approach, which in, in this building is that, uh, where you have say cream walls, or you can go for a neurotypical approach, which is to design the building as typical as possible to what you what you would normally experience in everyday life. Um, other points that we have is uh, that um, designing for autism can often involve a clear layout. If somebody can walk into the building and see where they're supposed to be and supposed to go to or how they function and walk around the building and what room is used for what purpose, that can really help as well. There are other points which can be implemented into buildings and this can include um, uh, walls that may be curved to help you find your way around the building and it, it, it's just accessing different rooms through the use of touch rather than visually. We would also note that it's, it's important to, for buildings, not, uh, for rooms, sorry, not to be multifunctional. So we often say that a room has a particular use and we would stick to that use in that room rather than having it as a flexible space where one minute it may be for cooking and one minute may be for something else such as arts and crafts. Another point we would note is that uh, strong shadows and sunlight can be quite distracting and therefore quite stressful for people with neurological conditions. So soft lighting is good, but also the option to be able to pull the blinds down on, on some windows which there may be something distracting going outside, but having roof lights in which you can keep the natural daylight. Um, one of the key, key points when it comes to uh, designing for people with autism is acoustics. Now, some people will be very sensitive to noise, so what we would recommend is that you up the acoustics way higher than the building regulations uh, would normally specify. And this is really just to keep a calm environment internally within the building. One other key point, and probably my uh, final point on this, is um, patterns. We would generally avoid patterns in most buildings for people with neurological conditions. The reason being is because it can be quite stressful and um, strong patterns and bold patterns, um, if anything is out within the pattern, that can uh, be picked up by somebody and they can focus on that element.